Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday service. Let us pray. God, we have been a scattered people, roaming, looking for places to call home. You have called us home and gathered us in, given us a land of belonging where all are welcome. You have sought us out, brought us in, and held us in this great story. Amen. We sing our first hymn, Let all the world in every corner sing, My God and King. Julia will now bring us our Bible reading, followed by the talk which this week Judith will bring us. The reading is taken from St Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 to 46, the sheep and the goats. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger, needing clothes or sick or in prison, and did not help you? He will reply, Truly, I tell you, 
Whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I wonder what image springs to your mind when you hear the word king. I think my ideas have changed forever after a parish pantomime when we were introduced to King sat upon the seventh. Adrian and I took part in many pantomimes in my previous parish. The scene that will remain with me to my dying day is the scene when Adrian, as King sat upon, declared his love for Dame Trot. It's not often you witness your husband pursuing a woman across the stage on his knees and then singing to her. As a king though, King sat upon was kind and lovable, full of good intentions, but also slightly dotty, a bit daft. It was very well played. Although no doubt there have been kings throughout history who could be described in that way, the popular image of a king is of someone rather different. Someone with power and authority, living in a grand palace far removed from the people of his kingdom. Ask any child to dress as a king and the crown and the posh clothes will immediately come out and even the way of wearing them involves strutting about and looking imperiously down your nose. Interesting then that the readings chosen each year for Christ the King Sunday are also very unlike the expectation of kingship. They either have Jesus on the cross talking to the two criminals being crucified on either side of him where one says to Jesus, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Or Jesus in front of Pilate, and Pilate asking Jesus, are you the king of the Jews? Both these readings have Jesus in a rather vulnerable position, to say the least. No fine robes, a crown of thorns, not of jewels, no golden throne, but a wooden cross. But today's reading at first glance appears to have Jesus in a very different position, where Matthew's parable of the Last Judgment shows a glorified Son of Man surrounded by angels rising before the nations of the world. Perhaps this is more like the King we expect. There doesn't seem to be much vulnerability here. It's an image of power, judging the people of the world as they stand or perhaps cower before him. And yet, when we look carefully, where do we actually find Jesus in this reading? He is one with the poor, the hungry, the stranger, with those in prison and sick and thirsty. Imagine for a moment three alien travellers journeying from outer space aboard their starship. They're coming with the intention of finding an unusual king who is rumoured to be living among us. Three pilgrims land unannounced on our doorstep, carrying the gifts they've brought from afar, and tell us why they've journeyed to this place. We're looking for this King, Jesus. Where, they ask, can we find him? Well, we might direct them to look in the church, in the hope that they might find him here among us, at least when it's open. But perhaps what we should be doing is directing them to refugee camps and hospitals food banks and prisons, because we could say Jesus himself told us that he was to be found among those who are there. He will be found among those who suffer. I am these people. Serve me through them. They matter, and how you treat them matters too. And we're not expected to have special training or great religious insight. Those who are praised are praised for very ordinary and simple things, for noticing those who are in need and helping to bring some relief, for treating each person as unique and important and precious, for not being so tied up with their own lives that they have failed to see. As one person said, believing all the right creeds and conducting the most wonderful worship ever, if you neglect the poor, the sick, the homeless, and lead your beautifully robed procession past them all, well, you'll be joining the goats. We like to think we'll be there with the sheep, 
We come to church, even if it's online at the moment. We say our prayers. We support good causes. We're kind to one another. If we don't actually go prison visiting or house the homeless ourselves, we give financial support to those who do. But we know deep down that we've got a lot of learning to do. I wonder sometimes it if it would help us to see what Jesus is driving at in this reading, if we turned it round a bit, because there are times when we are among those who hunger and thirst. Not for food and drink maybe, but for other basic essentials that give life. We hunger and thirst to be wanted and to be loved, to be affirmed and encouraged, to live in peace and justice. We are naked when everyone knows we have failed, when we are exposed in our weaknesses, when we lose our good name. We are the stranger when we feel like an outsider, when we are excluded because of our difference, our accent, our race, our way of believing in God or worshipping him, or when we are ignored. We are sick when we are burdened with anxiety or loss, when we are sad, when we are broken, when we are depressed. We are imprisoned when we are shut inside our own loneliness, when we feel hemmed in by life and misfortune. And we hope that others will notice our plight and minister to us. It only takes one act of kindness to make us feel that others care. And that's what Jesus is asking us to do. One simple thing that will make a difference. Today, Christ the King Sunday used to have another name, Stir Up Sunday, and still conjures up for me thoughts of a large wooden spoon and a very large pudding basin, dried fruits and the odd dash of brandy, standing with my mum as we stirred the Christmas pudding together. Later, some of us may well be stirring our Christmas puddings or making our cakes. Here now, we celebrate the everlasting presence of Christ the King. Let us pray that his presence in us will stir up our lives to take seriously the call to be kind and to love, to care and to serve. Jesus said, just as you did it to one of the least of them who are members of my family, you did it to me. Amen. When I say, Lord God, we lift your children before you, please reply with, may they find rest for their souls. We pray for all in authority that they will be respectfully conscious of the weight on their shoulders and that they will act responsibly for the people they serve. We pray for them in their personal lives with the worries and cares that only they see. Lord God, we lift your children before you. May they find rest for their souls. We pray for our friends, family, colleagues. We pray that as we walk alongside them, you will use us to bring them close to you and they will learn of your love. Lord God, we lift your children before you. May they find rest for their souls. We pray that we might be sensitive to the needs of those around us, the people we see every day, perhaps as fleetingly as at the shops or in the bus queue. We have no idea what burdens they are carrying or if they need a kind word from you that only we can give. Lord God, we lift your children before you. May they find rest for their souls. We pray that we see the positives in people, even when it's hard, and reach out to encourage them. Lord God, we lift your children before you. May they find rest for their souls. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
we sing our next hymn, King of Kings Majesty. I would like to highlight some notices on both websites or instructions on how to make a Jesse tree and how to build it up and add to it throughout Advent. It would be really good if you could regularly send in pictures of how your, uh, how your Jesse tree is building up over the next few weeks. You can make it from twigs from the garden, you can paint one or you can cut one out of cardboard and it is for children of all ages to get involved. Next Sunday is Advent Sunday, and so the theme of the gallery is darkness to light. So we want lots of photographs on that theme. It could be of the beautiful sky, or it could be of a candle, but let's be creative and send in pictures on that theme, darkness to light. If you would like to receive a monthly notice sheet, the first one will be sent out uh, in at the beginning of December, then please let me know. We can email it to you or we can post it to you. But now we're going to sing Happy Birthday. Happy Birthday to you. Last week I asked you to send in some jokes and so I've only got my own self to blame. I'm going to read some of the jokes out and then we've got some videos. The first joke is from René. A man went to his vicar and said, I want you and your wife to take a three month trip to the Holy Land at my expense. When you come back I'll have a surprise for you. The vicar accepted the offer and he and his wife flew off to the Middle East. Three months later, they returned home and were met by the wealthy parishioner who told them 
that while they were gone, he had had a new church built. It's the finest building money can buy, he told the vicar. No expense was spared, and he was right. It was a magnificent edifice, both outside and in. But there was one striking difference. There was only one pew. And it was at the very back of the church. A church with only one pew, asked the vicar. You just wait until Sunday, the rich man said. When the time came for the Sunday service, the early arrivals entered the church, filed onto the one pew and sat down. When the pew was full, a switch clicked silently. A circuit closed, the gears meshed, a belt moved, and automatically the rear pew began to move forward. When it reached the front of the church, it came to a stop. At the same time, another empty pew came up from below at the back and more people sat down. And so it continued, pews filling and moving forwards until finally the church was full from front to back. Wonderful, said the vicar. Marvellous, said his wife. The service began. And the vicar started to preach his sermon. He launched into his text, and when twelve o'clock came, he was still going strong, with no, with no end in sight. Suddenly, a bell rang, and the trap door opened, and the pulpit with the vicar disappeared. Wonderful, said one member of the congregation. Marvellous, said another. Well, thank you for Rene. I hope you didn't have any vicars in mind when you found that. And now the next joke is from Edward. I went for an eye test at the opticians around 10 years ago. I had to look into a large machine and tell the optician what I could see. I told him that I could see pubs closed, people wearing masks and a Chinese man eating a bat. Well, you don't need glasses, said the optician, because you have 2020 vision. Oh dear. Right, okay. Thank you very much, Edward. And now we've got a few from Pam, who was on a bit of a roll. My friend asked me to round up 37 sheep, and so I said 40. Right, okay. See if we can get any better. What do you call the soft tissue? Between a shark's teeth, a slow swimmer. Women usually claim childbirth is the most painful experience of their lives until three years later they start stepping on Lego bricks. Well, that is true. The other day, my dog ate all the pieces of Scrabble. Now, He's leaving little messages around the house. And if you think it couldn't get any worse, we're now going to watch our videos. A man walked into a bookshop. Have you got any really good books about turtles? Hardback? Yes, and with a little head and flippers sticking out. How do you know Moses wore a wig? Sometimes he was seen with Aaron, and sometimes he wasn't. Two Eskimos went paddling in a kayak. It got a bit chilly, so they lit a fire in the bottom of the boat. It sank. It just goes to prove you can't have your kayak and eat it. I'm reading a book about anti-gravity. It's impossible to put down. Where is Solomon's temple? At the side of his head. I was walking down the street the other day and a man approached me and he came up to me and he threw a block of butter, a lump of cheese and a bottle of milk at me. How dare he? I met a really famous person at work the other day. It was the man who invented window sills. It was an absolute ledge. Why did the cow cross the road? 
because it wanted to go to the movies. Well, thank you for taking part and sending in your videos and your jokes. And thank you for sending in your pictures for this week's gallery, which we're going to enjoy now. Over the past few months, we have had prayers uh, read from Sydney, from Paris, from Moscow, from all kinds of places in Britain. Well, now we're going to Germany, to Hanover, where Alex, Kerstin and baby Paul will lead us in our special prayers for this week. God of all wisdom, we pray for our leaders. The World Health Organization, national governments, and local leaders too. Heads of schools, hospitals, and other institutions. Since you have positioned these people in public service for this hour, we ask you to grant them wisdom beyond their own wisdom to contain this virus. Faith beyond their own faith to fight this fear and strength beyond their own strength to sustain vital institutions throughout this turmoil. God of all wisdom and counsel, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, at this time of pandemic, let us foster respect and solidarity with others, especially those who are weak or poor. Let, let us remain calm and ignore unsubstantiated rumors. Let us take advantage of living together as a family. Let us cultivate responsibility, patience and hope. Amen. Amen. We sing our final hymn, All People That On Earth Do Dwell.
as we come to the end of our service, let us end the service as we began, in prayer. O God of kindness, send us out with more time for interruptions and more generosity for kindness, so that we might see you within these walls and beyond these walls. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.